Hi, welcome to Foundations Enterprise DevOps Secure CI CD. My name is Dennis. Let's go ahead and get started. Our learning objectives for today include identifying parts of a robust CI CD pipeline, continuous integration, continuous deployment, or in some cases, continuous delivery, depending on your maturity. We also want to create a functional repository and pipeline in AWS. And we want to be able to create and implement test cases for security validation, as well as unit test cases uh, for the requirements of your function, ensuring that you have validation of your output. So CI CD pipelines, what does that exactly mean? Everyone says pipelines. Really, the pipeline is the backbone towards CI CD functions. Your pipeline solution vendor or your technology that you utilize for your pipeline itself must have continuous integration with your other tools, such as your build tools uh, for a C family. If you're using it on a uh, local instance, that could be uh, GCC. You also might have continuous deployment, such as using Ansible or SaltStack or even Chef or Puppet for the actual deployment phases. Now, these are non AWS technologies. However, if you decide to utilize AWS specific technologies, there's always integration with the AWS code pipeline inside CI CD with their other services. So let's take a moment to understand pipeline concepts. The continuous part is always going in a flow of starting with something and ending with something and having continuous monitoring and feedback in between. What does this sound like and look like to you? Remember our security part portion where we're doing continuous monitoring and other items within the monitoring as well as the DFIR, digital forensics and incident response. We also have security uh, and not security monitoring, such as logs and help. And if you remember uh, from previous lectures, X-ray or other instrumentation against your code, that's all part of continuous monitoring and feedback. Let's take a closer examination of the source page. Your source page would be your GitHubs and ECR, such as um, container repository as a container registry. Uh, it could be code commit. Or if you're really old school, it could be SVN uh, repository, really wherever your go, code goes. It goes next into the build stage, which could be um, code build, <clears throat> GCC, or in the case of Windows, uh, Ming GW for your uh, code build stuff. You also have testing, which is where your test cases come from. We're going to also see what unit testing looks like. Your deployments for the testing stage. So you're going from uh, finally right here to a staging environment. So let's go ahead and erase our stuff right here. Staging environment. So that's non prod staging. Now, this is for your uh, user acceptance testing right here. And then finally, you have to production. You can also go to uh, a team test stage, which will still be under dev or QA, something like that. And this is before it ever reaches your user. This is where you might have user acceptance testing. And then finally, to the production for your end stakeholders. Now, that was a lot. And it, it's very difficult to visualize this and that to actual practice unless you're doing it. So in the labs, we'll also focus on what that looks like, we'll analyze some of this in the demonstration. Really beyond AWS code pipeline, there's many, many other industry tools. Jenkins is one of the most popular ones. You also have Circle CI and the Azure pipelines as part of the AWS DevOps suite. Remember that pipelines are there to orchestrate stages and actions together, and they must integrate with other tools. So that's part of a continuous integration factor. Continuous deployment must be to integrate with other deployment tools, right? How do you actually get the code to actual deployment staging uh, for a production or non-production environment? No matter the tool, make sure you have plugins and extensions that support all your tech stack for now and in the future based on what your product needs are as well as your stakeholder needs. Here's a Jenkins example. Now, although we don't cover Jenkins in terms of uh, building it ourselves outside of this course, I want you to be aware of it because all pipelines essentially work the same way. Here's a Jenkins file example, which is the equivalent of Docker file when we look at uh, the different stages and creating actions in those stages. Our simple pipeline here is to use a Python 2 Alpine image. 
And then we want to go ahead and build our application by adding uh, the Py file right there, uh, our, our, our sourcing right here. And then finally have our cloud resourcing as part of our build stage. So that all the stuff that happens is right here in the build stage. The Python unit test framework, along with your pipeline, is something that you can utilize for test cases. So, so far up to this point of the course, we've been doing everything manually, creating test functions without a testing framework, which is unit test. Now, I saved unit test for the last module here because I want to make sure that you understood the concepts of testing cases and understanding input validation and outputs to make this easier for you. The unit test framework inside Python is a, a specific testing framework for functions. Integration testing can also be utilized, which means integration testing means API to API testing in most cases, right? Direct integration. Unit testing is at the functional. So functional, which is the focus of here. You can do both, but it depends on your test cases. The most important part is the test case, aka those functions that you've tested all, all along is provided by a test loader. It is also part of a test suite, which is a class. And then the test runner provides that actual engine to perform the testing as part of your build process. Remember all this, including uh, the build process here, you can have your unit testing inside the build stage here if you wish. or you can separate it into a completely different stage. And if the build passes, you start your testing. So if it passes, it continues on to the next stages. Now, when the program returns and completes, you're always looking at return of zero, which means you pass. A return of what means you failed. Think about it. That's right, one, right? If you have a sys exit, for instance, inside Python, a one, that means there's an error. And that means it'll fail the build process right here. If you have an exit of zero, it'll continue on to the next pipeline stage. How you put your test cases, you want to put your test cases as early into the process as possible. My personal preference is to put the uh, test cases, the unit tests, uh, unit and functional testing by itself in the actual build process. That way I know my functions are correct before we go anything further. If I create a different test stage, it would be for integration to ensure that the other APIs can scale based on my needs as outside my, uh, usually outside my realm of development and direct capabilities as a developer, uh, if I'm using serverless or a third party service, for, for instance. Again, the pipeline setup is all up to you as DevOps. You determine what's best for your use case. Here's an example of using AWS uh, test cases here with AWS uh, Lambda API. Here I have my standard. Uh, Center API here, and it's a test case, right? It's a test case using the unit test framework. Now, the important part is, I this is my API that says return to 200 code in my date and time in the hello world. Cool. Now, in terms of my build spec inside code pipeline, not camel. Now, you can do the same thing when with Jenkins, and we won't set up Jenkins uh, entirely in this class as part of my hands-on lab. You'll get a, a quick demonstration of its capabilities. I want you to focus on this. Everything has the build spec, just like you had a Docker file uh, and you built the Docker based on that spec. A build spec that YAML is in code pipeline for AWS, as well as uh, build spec files are for other compiling-based applications. How you build it and what needs to be happening really depends on you. Here is a snippet of a code pipeline YAML file. And we're saying that we're using the discover test folder inside the unit test module. So if your Lambda was packaged along with a test folder and you had all these certain tests to test the output such as 200K, make sure you have hello world.txt turned to you, it's gonna be in that folder and it's gonna run it. And if it receives a zero, that means you pass. If you see some one, it means you fell and then you need to go look at it. Here's the actual test case, right? The test case using the unit test framework is all uh, dependent on you. It's a single test handler class, which is your suite, and here's your test case. Notice that the test underscore prefix is always used. 
you can use assert, which allows you to start saying, hey, is this, is this possible or not? And the built-in function of the Python. Otherwise, you can do so manually. As long as, you're, um, as long as you don't have to have a return, or maybe you do, as long as this return is zero, your test case passes. If it returns a one, your test case will fail and the signal will go back out to the unit test framework and ultimately uh, return to this, uh, this command line right here. So let me erase all this here. So remember the signal for the error or the pass returns a zero or one right here from this test case, okay? This is executed right here. What does this look like? Well, at least in AWS code pipeline, we'll use an example of build test case failure. Take a moment to look, uh, take a look at this, pause the video and try to understand what happened here and why did it fail? All right, now that you've taken some time to look at it, let's look at our test case failure. Notice I talked about test case of one here. Right, failure is one with a return code of one. We had one test and it said something wrong in line 13 of our test. Our response did not equal what we expected. The output that I actually committed here was, hey, give me hello CICD world as opposed to hello world. That's not the same string and it'll give me a failure of that test. Exit status of one, causing the build failure to stop. That we need to go ahead and look at that pipeline for that error. In most cases, you'll get a notification if you configure that accordingly. Here's an example of a test case that passes. Notice that I modified our, our, our delta right here to add a space and then followed by test three and it passes, why? Because even though it's not hello world, it finds the hello world substring in my text, therefore passing. Keep this in mind as you go through what makes sure you're passing the fill. If you must have hello world exactly, make sure your test case simplifies the exact art, uh, response as opposed to a uh, a substring search or another value. Now we need to talk about security of the pipeline. So just like everything else, if you don't do serverless, even if you do do serverless, you have to have some sort of security around the infrastructure. AWS takes care of this for you using code pipeline. However, you, if you decide to use Jenkins and uh, as a pipeline and build across that using uh, non-AWS technologies, you still have to do security of the pipeline. One of the Easiest ways to do so is use uh, the Bridge Crew open source package, which allows checks against your uh, compliance against best practices of your AWS account um, and synthesized pipeline configurations, such as default passwords, uh, uh, a security group open to the internet, stuff of that nature is also checked inside your configuration and it will pass and fill a build of itself before a pipeline is ever modified. As an attacker, the reason why we want to do security of the pipeline, not just in the pipeline, is that if I made another stage, I can inject code into the build process. Actually, I wouldn't do that. At, I could do it at the source, which is, but that's pipeline. That's not as much pipeline security as the repo security. So I would do build and deploy and check my custom hook sources in there if I compromise the pipeline itself. With Jenkins, if you're doing something and you're hosting your own pipeline on-premise, you might have to do patching of the servers uh, and other configurations around to ensure that you are not going to get compromised. In the past, in different Jen Jenkins configurations and versions, they've been real easy to compromise to get uh, the root level privileges of the system. Now let's take a break and we'll come back and we'll explore additional items of a CSD pipeline um, as well as the AWS specific tech stack services for serverless compute, uh, specifically inside the pipeline. All right, welcome back. I hope you had a great break. Let's get started. AWS specific CI CD services. We're going to cover an overview of the example of them, then we'll get uh, cracking into looking at how one is deployed. As mentioned previously, you can have uh, a pipeline integrate with many different technologies besides AWS native technologies. Code pipeline is no different. So instead of using code commit, you could have GitHub. Instead of building it yourself using code build, you could have changes. For your deployment service, you can utilize anything, including other cloud services, such as uh, the AWS DevOps suite, sorry, the Azure DevOps suite, as well as the code deploy, uh, or even potentially uh, a third, third open source tool, such as uh, Ansible service. 
uh, and other services that are supported by AWS's integration. Again, the pipeline is broken out based on stages. Here's a four-stage pipeline instead, saying code commit, build, deploy, and then you can have testing. Now this deployment doesn't go to different non-prod stages in the same pipeline. You can actually have this deployed to a testing stage only, and then once that's approved, have a second pipeline deploy specifically for the prod environment from the same code repo. To me, that's the best practice, but some people like to utilize a, a full pipeline that deploys to prod, for instance, later on. So all depending on your requirements, again, AWS code pipeline allows you for that integration and orchestration of your build process. How about Jenkins as a reverse? You can actually have Jenkins in there and then utilize the plugins from AWS to use code build, uh, sending artifacts to S3 for, for finalization and then finally deploy using code deploy. Just another example of how you can use combinations to mixing and matching for true continuous integration. Now let's look a little bit deeper into the code pipeline stack. The code pipeline stack includes multiple components such as code commit, which is your repository. It includes code build, which is your build spec, which is uh, GCC or uh, mean GW, depends on what you're looking for. Code deploy, X-ray, and then code star. X-Ray is not listed here because it's a newer service. However, X-Ray is for instrumentation. Remember that instrumentation based on previous lectures really means that you're monitoring deep level performance and not sampling them like we did with the profiles. If you want to deploy infrastructure or applications, then you can mix and match based on what you choose. Infrastructure examples include deploying EC2 related instances using the systems management. Or how about cloud formation for uh, fully uh, automated stacks including VPCs, EC2s, load balancers, et cetera. Or how about you com uh, commit your application source code, build it, and then use code deploy to uh, deploy it to uh, lambdas or uh, container environments using ECS. Uh, lamb, uh, so again, lots of flexibility. It's all about the orchestration and how many stages that you're looking for. Oh, one thing to note. Note here, this is a six stage pipeline. So let's take out our eraser here. Now, I want to note this and call this out. You'll be doing this in the lab. You will actually be creating the infrastructure using uh, a, a special suite called CDK, which is Cloud Development Kit. It's AWS specific and focuses on infrastructure as code. This is the infrastructure. It'll deploy itself first. So the pipeline will be deployed and then followed by your application. Uh, through your stages. AWS code build allows you to actually utilize a build process in your pipeline. So you can do whatever you want. And then those commands that we saw in Jenkins, very, very similar syntax here for your build spec. Insert your commands for your stage and let it rip. Remember that artifacts are based on what the build output is and you need to store it somewhere. And so code artifact can do that or S3. Take a moment to look at this and compare it against the Jenkins, uh, Jenkins file that you saw in earlier slides. All right, let's resume. Hopefully you had some time to pause the video and look at that. Also, AWS code deploy allows you to do multiple stages of deployments. Uh, let's say you do it in non-prod as well as the production environment. You can do uh, blue-green or you can do uh, simultaneous deployments, all up to you. Code deploy will utilize cloud formation in the back end to start up different processes and requirements such as ECS, EC2, or if you use code, uh, code deploy uh, agents, you can actually deploy items on premise as well as the EC2 instances themselves. Very cool stuff. One thing I want to touch on, even though we don't have it in scope of our, our lecture series, is that it was X ray. Instrumentation is mission critical for deep. DevOps engineering requirements. Understanding your API, and if there's a certain performance issue, error codes, or anything of that nature, what's our pass to fail rate ratios, and where does each API trace to? Which calls the other? Is it a branch? Is it simultaneous? You wouldn't know without instrumentation. Now, this is different from a stack trace or a memory trace because those are local to a system. Once you have decoupled services in microservice architecture, that is what gets really difficult. So therefore using instrumentation frameworks such as X-Ray, you can use on-premise 
container as well as serverless uh, computing to track more than AWS services. You can track your on-code one as well, as long as you have an X-ray collector collecting all that data. Now remember that instrumentation is different from profiling. Profiling is faster and does sampling. Instrumentation takes every piece of data to give you that output and responsiveness information that you're looking for. Finally, but not least, is AWS CodeStar. Now, CodeStar is hated on by some developers. I personally don't hate it. Think about this. CodeStar uh, is actually great. It wraps everything around a dashboard. So you can create projects. Now, the thing about CodeStar, and I think the reason why some developers don't like it as much as uh, manually deploying code pipeline, uh, or at least through automation, is that CodeStar is based on a per account basis. Per account and per regional basis. So you can have multiple products inside one account, but your team members, if you want to collaborate with multiple I, uh, developers, they must have IAM users. Right? IAM users inside uh, their teams. You, at the time of this recording and the writing, you can only have IAM users in the same account. There's no cross account functionality. And that's a limit because when you talk about the best practices of AWS, you want to have multi account structures. So for larger teams, this gets really difficult because each developer might have their own AWS dev account structure. Now, if you have a smaller team and it's very uh, nimble and uh, you want to have PMs uh, overseeing different things, you might have stakeholders testing it uh, and looking at the uh, performance, CodeStar might be for you because it wraps all this great stuff, code pipeline and orchestration in a full abstraction, giving you a single pane of glass. Again, it uses all the, uh, it itself is free, but it uses all the back end resources and you only pay for what you use. Now, for a break in the demo, take a break. Let's come back and we'll uh, look at some of the additional interesting features of pipelines and um, AWS technology and non AWS technology. Welcome back. I hope you had a great break. Now, I mentioned I wasn't going to help you build Docker, uh, a, a Jenkins uh, Docker deployment, but I wanted to showcase to you what it might look like. I use Docker Pool and the Jenkins long-term support solution. To find that, you go to hub.docker.com and ensure that you're not using a, a deprecated edition and always utilize the most official uh, source possible. After I've pulled it, using documentation and under runtime requirements, I have run it with 8080 on my local host daemon as well as 8080 on the listening host inside the container side. Now, as part of the package deployment, it gives me an initial password code for my deployment. I'll need this in a second. So let me copy this. As we run uh, Jenkins for the first time, you'll have to deploy it using a, a deployment password. We'll use that. We'll install the suggested plugins. I can also include select plugins um, for this. For this, I'll just use the select plugins. And we can look at the different items in here. Lots of cool integrations out of the box. I can go to, um, let's see if Python or AWS is installed. Oh, configure as code. We have many different interesting plugins for use. And these are the ones that are built in out of the box. You can also download them. Notice that you have a Bitbuck as a repo versus Git, GitHub. So all these together are really important, including Active Directory for uh, integration into a single sign-on uh, instance or an LDAP integration instance. I'm going to install suggested plugins. And as this goes through, this may take a little bit. So I'm going to pause the video here, and then we'll get picked back up where this stuff leaves off. All right. The plugins are installed. We're back. Let's go ahead and create my first user. I'll just say, uh, I don't know, admin, 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 parable admin, foo at leaders.com. Oh, it looks like continue as admin. Oh, well, I'll say admin one. Then continue. And then now we have our instance configuration. Hit finish. Start using Jenkins. And our dashboard right here, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and set up a, a an item. So 
For this, we'll go to create a new item. I'm going to start with our pipeline. Now, from this, we're going to utilize this uh, tutorial right here. So if you want to know Jenkins.io, look for the Hello World Python tutorial if you want to follow along. Provide a name for your new item. So we'll just say uh, my first pipeline. We'll use pipeline, press OK. Now here we have a lot of interesting stuff. We're gonna go ahead and try to figure out how to add a source. Now, we have our pipeline script and build triggers and all this great information in here. So we'll say find a new name for our pipeline and let's go through our add source here. We'll click the add source button. So add source, not sure I see that here. So there could be an issue where we have a, uh, a, a, a a lack of a command in here. So I even misspelled pipeline, so that's not good. So let's go ahead and go to pipeline here. Our first pipeline. We'll delete the pipeline and retry that. See if I missed anything. We'll create a pipeline. And we'll say a multi-branch pipeline. Okay. Multi-branch pipeline using my pipeline. My first pipeline. This time I'm spelling it correctly. Press OK. All right. And then we want to add a source. There we go. By Jenkins file, what we added earlier. Let's go back to here. We'll use an example. We'll use the, the build process here, a very simple one. So since we know Python, let's just use uh, this method script here. We want to use a Jenkins file using a script path. And we're going to say add source button and type of repository you want to fill with the details. Now well, we'll use a um, we can use this in here. That's kind of neat. All you uh, can get discover branches and repository URL, and we have to provide credentials for that. See if we can add a Jenkins file by script path instead. And then see if we can find a way to add that Jenkins file directly in there. Looks like it's going to want me to add all of this. We want to go ahead and modify the Jenkins to run the product, the sh command, and the local machine. All right, so it looks like I'm going to go ahead and create a GitHub instead. I'm going to go ahead and create a GitHub URL repo right here, which is this is my uh, repository. Copy this in here. And we'll create a new file and we'll utilize the Python side of it. And then we'll say Jenkins file. Make sure we are using our case sensitivity here. So where's our Jenkins file name? Ah, there it is. Commit. All right. So we got our first pipeline here and we have an SH version, a still build stage. We'll set that up, the corner one. 
Let's save this for now. And I probably should have uh, validated that. Anonymous access, one branch process indexing because I made it public. Checking the found Jenkins file, met the criteria, the main branch, and examined everything for me. Perfect. So now at this point, it's building my, uh, starting the build execution process right here inside my pipeline. Let's go at the status. We have one branch already. And I have some information right here. We have schedule build. And right now it's still executing. We had last build number one some, some time ago, some of recent changes. And we have an indexing right now. And it looks like it's successful. So it's because, because we didn't do anything else other than uh, look at the, the version right here. So that's all there was to it uh, in terms of getting your first pipeline from a readme standpoint up and started. Uh, the interesting part is that it integrates with GitHub right there. And you can, uh, if you're following along, you can also utilize this, this URL right here uh, for the sake of uh, demonstration and modify it to what you're looking for. Make sure to read the documentation, uh, look for multiple steps and source control management uh, for additional ideas what to add to your, to your build stage right here, such as this. Okay, again, I'm not fo focusing too much into uh, Jenkins, but I wanted to show you case to you what a setup might look like and what we can do to uh, uh, get that going up, up and running with a Jenkins file. Going back up here, you can only use new item uh, pipeline and you use test and you can utilize the GUI instead. And remember, infrastructure as code is always best because you're consistent. You can use a pipeline script in here uh, and use this Groovy code instead, which you'll have to learn, uh, which is uh, Jenkins uh, common. And you add all your options here. The Jenkins file I feel is a little better. To clean up, let's log out. Notice that it's running now and I'm not returning back. So let's go ahead and go ahead and create a new PowerShell window. I'll bring that over here. Docker images, Docker containers. Oops. Um, I gotta look at the syntax is real quick. Oh, uh, maybe Docker LS. There we go. Uh, so Docker container LS, it's a container runtime of this image. And so that's my runtime here. Let's do it. Uh, Docker container stop the container ID. Successfully stop that. Let's look at our other window. We'll return back to our prompt, which is what we expected. So exit it clear. So we have Docker container LS again. Whoopsie. Now nothing's running. Docker image. Now we want to go ahead and do a Docker uh, RMI and then remove our Jenkins image. Save some space because, you know, 400 megs is still 400 megs. Oh, we want to remove our image ID, apologies. There we go. We just freed up 441 megabytes. And if we do a, a refresh, it should, should be refused because we are no longer listening uh, as expected. Now, let's go into uh, AWS and look at our code pipeline example here before we go to your labs. I've used code pipeline. And I have a couple of items in here. Over here, we have our source, build, and deployment stages. The best part about all of this is that you can edit these and then look at the action I'm using code commit here instead. I can use code build. And I have my deployment using the uh, cloud formation because I'm using serverless in my case. Discard my changes. Best practice as usual. 
And here's my code. I'm using code star. I can I have a readme file on how to utilize it. And if I do a, a index right here, there's my build spec here, my test right here, my index here. I can actually, since I'm in code commit, I can edit this code, do a test for, as soon as I commit, uh, new test demo for pipeline, right? So you'll see that the pipeline starts triggering as soon as I have some changes. So I've changed that to say return uh, test four. And now you should see it's in progress. So this is the, these greens are here, the last build uh, success. And now it's gonna hook into and perform my code build process using the build spec in here. My build commands include using a CloudFormation package template to send the artifacts to the S3 bucket for the object exports. The YAML file will be utilized as CloudFormation template to be deployed via CloudFormation. And most importantly, our pre-build process includes testing of my cases. We want it early on to the pipeline whenever possible, which I said is my per, uh, preference. Use the module unit test, discover the test folder. And if you go back to the code commit, you can see right here, I have a test folder. This test folder includes the test underscore handler test. And I have my test case definitions and Dunder main driver statements here. As we can see, we're looking for 200 OK and the header information resulting in, uh, as well as the hello by. So I have three assert statements here for a single test to make sure I have completion in my output. I intentionally failed that one here based on the last one that you saw in our lecture. And then if I refresh, you should have a build process succeeded in number four. And this is the one that we just changed. Let's go to our build details. And then here you can see the file system, environment variables, and anything else you decide to utilize. Clicking on it directly will allow you to see the log file of your successful build. And here's our delta right here with our test status code inside standard out of our logging output. Now, I want you to keep in mind, uh, in this module, we have two separate types of um, integration that you can use. So remember that unit test is part of the code star uh, attempt. And if you want to challenge yourself, try to use CDK with the example code that I've used and deploy it yourself and understand how code pipeline works using security testing of your code using Bandit as well as code pipeline security in itself. That's it for now. We'll see you in the next lecture or in the next module. Thanks for watching.